In this short video, I would like to discuss the anatomical landmarks used to identify key brain structures for functional neuroimaging studies. The lateral surface of the brain can be divided into three segments, referring to the sylvian fissure and the precentral sulcus. The precentral sulcus can divide the sylvian fissure into the proximal and distal sylvian fissures. The precentral sulcus usually consists of the superior and inferior segments and is intercepted by the superior and inferior frontal sulcus. The precentral sulcus is the anterior border of the precentral gyrus, considered the primary motor cortex. On the other hand, the central sulcus is the precentral gyrus's posterior border and the postcentral gyrus's anterior border. It should be noted that no sulcus intersects the central sulcus, which is a crucial structural difference between the precentral and central sulcus. Uh, this anatomical knowledge can be readily applied to finding the central sulcus on MRI. When the brain is observed in an axial plane, the precentral sulcus can be appreciated as an oblique sulcus intersected by a vertical sulcus corresponding to the superior frontal sulcus. The central sulcus is the oblique sulcus located posteriorly, thus enabling us to identify the precentral gyrus or the primary motor cortex. From a sagittal perspective, the precentral sulcus can be identified as an oblique sulcus intersected by a horizontal sulcus corresponding to the inferior frontal sulcus. The central sulcus is the oblique sulcus located posteriorly. Focusing our attention onto the inferior frontal gyrus, we must be aware that there are three major structures within this gyrus. The inferior frontal gyrus consists of pars orbitalis, pars triangularis, and pars operculalis from anterior to posterior. The pars triangularis is bordered anteriorly by a horizontal fissure deriving from the point of transition from the proximal to the distal sylvian fissure. The posterior border of the pars triangularis is a vertical fissure deriving from the same location as the horizontal fissure composing the anterior border of the pars triangularis. The pars triangularis corresponds to Brodmann's area 45 and the pars operculares to Brodmann's area 44. Broca's area is considered one of the most crucial structures in a conventional language model, activating motor system to produce spoken language. Taking advantage of the discussed anatomical knowledge, it is now possible to identify Broca's area on Sasher MRI. The inferior frontal sulcus and the precentral sulcus will be the primary guides to identify the Broca's area. Next, I would like to move to the parietal lobe. The intraparietal sulcus divides the parietal lobe into the superior and inferior parietal lobules. The intraparietal sulcus intersects with the postcentral gyrus, which is the posterior border of the postcentral gyrus. The inferior parietal lobule consists of the supramarginal gyrus and the angular gyrus. The angular gyrus is known to be in proximity to Wernicke's area thus functioning as one of the hubs for the language network. The superior temporal sulcus runs from the anterior segment of the temporal lobe into the angular gyrus in the parietal lobe. Wernicke's area is located at the very end of the sylvian fissure within the superior temporal gyrus.